<laughs> in five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the Genius Brain Podcast. We got my boy Khalif Boyd up in here today. Yeah, and I'm super flexible. No, this fool's fucking <laughs> the most unflexible man I've ever seen in my life. I can see it. I could hear his knees creak right now. Just, <laughs> oh, shit. Shit looks like a rat trap. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Bear trap. No. Like, ah. I had no Sorry. idea you were that unflexible. Yeah, man. It contributes to my hops. It does though, like the tight wound yeah. up muscles. It's like the the fast twitch mm-hmm. shit. My I shit bet you I could jump. I could what? I'm loose as fuck, dude. I'm slow. <laughs> I'm nice and slow. <laughs> nice. And... <laughs> yeah, you have like that fast <laughs> twitch. It's like all wound up, and you can fucking go. <laughs> yeah, I do. There, there was uh, talks about. Um, I forgot who I was talking. No, I wasn't talking to this person. It was an interview with this guy named Frank Yeager, and he was talking about one of my favorite fighters in the UFC called uh, his name is Essen Barbosa. He has a really fast switch kick. Bop bop, really quick. And it's, you would think that he's very flexible because of how flexible his hips are and how he can kick. But he was talking about he's actually not flexible at all. Like we were stretching each other while they were while they were um, you know training. training. And he says like, dude, he can't stretch for shit, which is so surprising. But because his muscles are so tight, mm-hmm. his switch kick is like one of the fastest in the UFC. Because it's so tight, so that's his advantage. Yeah, that's you know, bad. Exactly. So you you could be at some. I could be a dude. good Barboza switch kick. You could do a back. fucking fast ass Flip. switch kick if you get that shit down, dude. Shit. I should lose as fuck. You don't hurt nobody. <laughs> All right. Well, shit. Now we're talking. Let's train. Yo. So basically, today we already know what we're going to talk about. And we're yeah. going to talk about the Jordan documentary. I love that you. It is the Jordan documentary. Yeah. What's the actual name, though? The Last Dance. The Last Fucking Dance. I've been putting off watching this for the longest time. Number one, it's not because I didn't think it was going to be good. I just didn't want to watch something that was going to make me feel bad about myself. (laughs) (laughs) What were your your expectations? I I just... I, it was going to be on some David Goggins shit. That's uh, why I, I was yeah, like, man, it's yeah. just going to make me feel like I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. Right? And it did. <laughs> it fucking did. Yeah. I watched the the, po- uh, the the podcast. I watched the doc. And the first episode alone, it already showed you how different Jordan is from every other fucking human being and how hard it is to match that standard. Mm. Because originally, because Kobe is more of our generation. I mean, Jordan was still our generation, but we were really, really, really young. Yeah, yeah. Right, we caught him towards like the tail end. For one, the stuff that I can remember of Jordan, it was towards the tail end of his career. Yeah, uh, everything else is like recaps or NBA uh, classics, right? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what re upped my memory about the stuff that he did, or some like old heads talking about him. But Kobe was that to us, right? We look at yeah. Kobe's work ethic. Yeah, he, you know he the way he would you know sh- dude. I read this f- funny ass article, <laughs> and it was it was them recounting. So Jeremy Lin was on. Was it Danny Green? His, his podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Danny yeah. Green, yeah. Uh-huh. So he has his podcast, right? And he was talking about how Kobe hurt himself. I think he tore his labrum or his shoulder or whatever, and he was going into practice. Uh, he hasn't been in practice in a while. And this is when Carlos <laughs> Boozer was in, uh, uh-huh. uh, was in the Lakers. Uh-huh. And so I guess they assumed that he was coming to practice you know, to say bye to the people who are going to get cut, right? And he comes out, and he's just like, I just want to say goodbye to the losers. Who are <laughs> you traded. You're just getting traded. This one came, came to practice to say goodbye to the losers that are getting traded because they're fucking weak. Oh, shit, That's man. Kobe Bryant, yeah. dude. And it, and then, you know, we talk about that relationship that he had with like Jeremy Lin and remember mm-hmm. that moment where he grabbed the, well, he got pissed because either Jeremy wasn't going to pass the ball or he wasn't going to foul somebody. He wanted uh, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. that was because he was, the coach told him not to. Mm-hmm. It was Byron Scott. Uh, no. I forgot the dude's name, dude. Is it Byron Scott? Was it Byron Scott? No. He was it? I forgot. can't remember who was coaching at the time, but he uh, was instructed not to. And then Kobe told him to. So that's like the weird dynamic that they have. It's like mm. when Kobe is on court, he's fucking coach. What he says is law. Yeah. But then, you know, Jeremy Lin, he's like, coach is coach. Right. And so he's like, I don't know yeah. what to do. And then Kobe just fucking got pissed at him. <laughs> but, you know, lo and behold, there's a reason why that happened. Yeah, yeah, man. But he literally came back to tell people that are fucking loser. That's so funny. That's is how that... intense he is. And then you look at that man who, who you look at who Kobe is, and then Kobe says in the doc, and when he came up, I'm old, damn near shed a tear. I know. I didn't expect that. I forgot. I was, I was like, like, oh, oh fuck. Dude, that's Kobe. And he goes, I hate it when people uh, ask me who would win uh who would win in a one-on-one, me or Jordan in his prime? It was like, Yo, he was yeah. like, even if I did think that or whatever, it's so disrespectful to even have that conversation because there is no Kobe if there wasn't Jordan. I asked him for advice. He coached me on my game. Mm-hmm. When he passed away, Jordan was talking about his 2 a.m. in the fucking morning and Kobe's asking me how to improve my target ball game. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that, that, that comparison was so disrespectful. One of the things I didn't realize too was the disrespect of Pippen. The disrespect? Like mean- how the, his contract. 
uh, contract. Yeah, yeah, dude. Well, because I, I, I there is these little blurbs about like Sky Piven's livid about the yeah. depiction of him in the Last Dance, but I also read an article that Jordan wasn't paid well either uh, in terms of this contract. Like he had a long term contract, and he never once went back to management. It's like I deserve more. He's all about basketball, which is weird. But yeah, Pippen, that was... At the time that he was signed, mm. from what I'd read, mm. uh, he was like the 16th highest paid person, right? Pippen. With, yeah, Pippen, yeah. which was great. Right. But that was only at the time that he was paid, right? Because he was a rookie. Mm-hmm. And so I guess the extension of his contract didn't include his rookie years. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it wasn't really seven years. Mm-hmm. It was like a total of like nine because right. it didn't include the rookie years. And so it kind of extended longer. But it was seven years for whatever that many millions, right? So there wasn't... No, how big of a star he was going to become signing that he was advised not to sign that contract mm. but because of the situation that he was in he had a, what a 10 person family or something whatever yeah, nine yeah, or ten people two in wheelchair bound his dad's in a wheelchair one of his, his brothers, brother's in a wheelchair, wheelchair. like parents back need then money. acl any kind of surgery was career ending exactly so he was injured and he wasn't yeah. sure that uh, he was going to play better than he was going to now right, so, so he didn't want to take that risk right which a lot of people advised him not to take that contract but mm. he was kind of put in we got his first family exactly yeah but the, the the contract was fucking terrible yeah it was what 17 18 mil for was, damn near what, eight years or some shit yeah, like, something that. like that it was it, so ridiculous for the best years of his life yeah now after his um chicago bulls contract and he went over to rockets the rockets and i think he got like a 25 million dollar yeah. deal <laughs> so it's for like two well, years yeah he played one year exactly uh, so it, he it kind of made up for it yeah but it, it was rough because watching in the documentary like he was kind of fed up with it. He he went head to head with all the GMs, and he was just yeah, like, Jerry "Fuck Cuff. this, yeah, fuck Ryan's dwarf, man." Yeah, dude, that was hard to watch. Yeah, that was really tough. It, it's so funny because like I guess there's like a joke about they call uh, Pippin uh, was it Pippin No Tippin or Tippin Pippin Pippin No Tippin Pippin Tippin because he was notorious for not paying tips. Oh, really? Going out in Chicago, like that's fucking. He would spend funny. thousands of dollars, never leave a tip. But Jordan was also known to be like that. I think, I forgot who, there's like all these stories about like Jordan, like uh, one of the teammates was giving a homeless person um, uh, money and he got mad at him. He's like, why are you giving him money? He could work at McDonald's if you wanted to. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. All right, we won't pay him then. Well, that's their mentality though. Yeah. That's, 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 that's not, that's, that's yeah. not even frugality. That's yeah. just their personality of yeah. people need to work for their shit. Yeah, that's it. Doesn't him. matter that's who him. it is. Yeah, that's him to the T, dude. Just watching him work, as, especially as a young person. Who the fuck was it that said that? Yeah, I was better than Jordan. James what, Worthy. James Worthy. That's what yeah. James Worthy was. Like, I, was <laughs> I was better than Jordan for two yeah. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> talking about a 21-year-old. Yeah. Him being 21 and fucking like, you know, he was so competitive. Like another story about him being like, after every practice, he would write a number on the dry board and be like, all right, he'd be like six. I did. I dunked on you, Sam Perkins, three times, and you, James Worthy, three times. That's how many times I dunked on you guys. Just like, damn. That's <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Yeah. Watching watching him go through the 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 whole Pistons saga. Oh, you know, I barely dude. remember that shit. Was crazy. <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. I didn't realize how <laughs> much of a fucking bully they were. They yeah. were assholes. They didn't punching, elbowing, they, throwing them. You know what's the funny part about that shit? It's like. Because I don't remember this, I can't speak for it. But from what the documentary is saying or what people recall from it, number one, Jordan's still pissed about it. Mm-hmm. You could tell he's still emotional about that yeah. shit. He was, oh, yeah. It's like they didn't win by basketball skill. They won by psychology. Yeah. It's like we're going to piss you off and get you off your game, and right. that's how they won. Right. And, you know, there's so many – and I knew of Isaiah Thomas being an asshole because that was his thing, right? Mm-hmm. He's like um, – The leader of the Bell Boys. He's the original Chris Paul. You know, but mm-hmm. just more savage because mm-hmm. he was a tiny dude that would just fucking hurt people on court. Yeah. Right? I forgot who the fuck he fucked up. Isaiah Thomas? Yeah. He made somebody bleed on court really bad. Really? I, I can't remember. I think there was like a picture of it back in the day. But uh, there was that one part in the doc where, doc, where Jordan was like, I don't want to hear what fucking he has to say. Yeah. And they showed him a clip of what he's talking about. He goes, that's what I said? Right there? Yeah. Because Isaiah Thomas was saying some bullshit. He goes, yeah. Back in the day when it was Basket, basketball, yeah. uh, when it came, there was there was no sportsmanship. Nobody shook hands. He goes, "There's a clip of Jordan yeah. when he lost, shaking yeah, every person's <laughs> hand." Yeah, he goes, "It's bullshit." He's making right. up shit. Yeah, he still hates Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, terrible time. It's a terrible time to, you know, not shake his hand and then have the Olympics 
come up and not be included in the dream team. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, which is funny because Chuck Daly, who was a coach of the Pistons, he was a coach of the dream team. Yeah. So not to have his star on the dream team, it was like what was said. Yeah, 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 yeah. That dream team was amazing though, dude. One of the best dream teams. Even watching that stuff and watching all these players that I used to watch, fucking uh, uh, Jason Kidd, when he Mm -hmm. was on the Suns, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, Mm -hmm. that's weird. Yeah. Right? Because I'm not used to seeing him in that Suns jersey. And I was like, I forgot about that shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and watching all these players kind of come back. I didn't know about that one, uh, <laughs> the one German dude, Kukoc, Kukoc, no, <laughs> no I, German dude. It wasn't Kukoc. It was the guy that died in the car accident. I remember that player dying, but I didn't remember what his relationship was to Chicago. It was it, I'm, I'm not sure if he was, but he died in Germany, and he they played him in the Olympics, and they were going to get picked up. And this was during the time that they were going through negotiations with Pippin, uh, and they were worried more about this guy that they were going to pick up in Germany or wherever. It wasn't Ku Coach. It was. It was. Oh, weird. Why do I not remember this? Yeah, and it was in the doc, and they were talking about how he he was. They never won against. He, they never won against. Um, Oh man, this is cool. I'm mixing up Ku Coach's story and somebody else. Oh. But this he was a part of, I'm not sure if it was the Pistons or whatever, but mm. he was going against Jordan all the time. It was Jordan and um oh shit, am I mixing this up right now? <laughs> I, I watched this as such a blur. But it was it was a player that oh, it wasn't on uh, they he wasn't on Chicago. I'm mixing up Ku Coach and this guy, but he was, if I could remember his fucking name, but he would play against Jordan like internationally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he was an international player. I forgot what team he was a part of, but they would go back and forth and they they called him like the next Jordan. Huh. Right? Um, they never won a game game against Jordan ever, right? But he was so tenacious, like there was a lot of respect for him, but he actually passed away um from a from a car accident while he was in Germany. Do you remember I this guy? Don't I, re- remember I remember this, this death. Dude, I gotta look that shit up. My phone, ain't, <laughs> my phone ain't even on me right now. But that 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 part was like pretty crazy. Huh. Either that was a part of the documentary. Or I read that up after. <laughs> I don't think that was in the documentary. I know Ku Coach though. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. I'll make you some Ku Coach. Yeah, Ku Coach. Like, yeah, I was like, what the hell? They were putting Kukoc. it on him, dude. Yeah, I was pretty tight. Hey, shit. Yeah, I was like, hey, fucking. Let's talk about Scotty Pippen's voice, though, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that deep ass voice. Yeah. He looked like he didn't give a fuck. Look, he yeah. just woke up. Yeah. What did he like about his depiction on the documentary? Was it? It was like one of those blurbs. I don't know if it was real or not. I don't know why he would even be mad because Jordan, he didn't look like bad. Yeah, because Jordan said like, "There's no Jordan without Pippen." Yeah, it's the best teammate he's ever played with, and maybe yeah. he was mad because Jordan was like, "Scotty was wrong for that shit when he when he took that rest off for the summer." Oh uh, yeah, maybe, maybe Jordan, dude. That the doc is so <laughs> real. Mm-hmm. Cause they're cursing left and right. They don't give a fuck. Horace, Grant, I guess Horace Grant didn't like the way he was depicted. Yeah, yeah. Horace, yeah. Because of, of the that book by Sam Smith, uh, the Jordan Rules. Mm. Yeah, the Jordan Rules talking about like what goes on behind the scenes of the you know championship Chicago Bulls and Jordan thought that Horace Grant was leaking information. Oh, stuff that was sacred to the locker room to this reporter, because. It's known that Horace and Sam Smith were good friends, mm. but Horace was like, "I understand this is private. I would never could have yeah. been the coaches. It could have been the coaching assistant. It could have been the you know general. It could have been anybody." But Jordan was like in the documentary, was like, "Oh, that was Horace. That was Horace." And then cut to Horace is like, "I never did that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was he, interesting to have them edit that in. When you watch that, when you watch <laughs> the doc, right, and you see kind of his struggles as an NBA player, does it make you want to play ball again, like super bad? This podcast is brought to you by Skillshare. What is Skillshare, you ask? It is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can learn the things you want at your pace based on your busy routine. See, now, I know a lot of people out there that want to make films for fun or maybe even as a side hustle. See, there's a lot of classes to take that Skillshare offers that I know that a lot of you would enjoy right now. And I've actually moved on to a course called iPhone Filmmaking my favorite course because when I travel, I don't like large equipment. So I kind of want to utilize what I have, which is my phone and make it look as cinematic as possible. And this course is really fun and really dope. Uh, Explore your creativity and get two free months of premium membership at skillshare.com slash brain. That's two whole months of 
unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. Get started and join today by heading to Skillshare.com slash brain. That's two free months of unlimited access to thousands of classes at Skillshare.com slash brain. It does to a certain degree. It, initially, it did. And then as you got to peel back the layers and see Jordan how, like I said earlier, like that dude's like a sociopath, man. Yeah. Like, and you know, his like, he's just addicted to competition. Like, I don't know if I can <laughs> wake up uh, before the sun comes up and be at it yeah. and train and do all that stuff. But it definitely makes me want to play basketball, that's for sure. But not at the high level like, that I used to. It's weird watching <clears throat> somebody dedicate themselves so seriously to one craft for the rest of their life because I don't know what that feels like. Mm. That's something that I, I'm envious of. Like mm. to be able to laser focus on one thing because you don't see Jordan, you know, out there playing the guitar. You don't see mm. him fucking learning how to be a Jabberwocky and shit like that. You know I mean? <laughs> but if you wanted to, <laughs> if you wanted to, I bet you that yeah. motherfucker would. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure if you came up to Jordan, you said you could never be a Jabberwocky. He's like, <laughs> oh, you want to okay. see? This motherfucker got a mask yeah. on. This <laughs> fucking pop locking. <laughs> Like, who is that tall ass? Mo- That's Jordan, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, just like the uh Chicago White Sox uh story that bit they want to went off of. Oh, that's right, yeah. And yeah. it's his indomitable spirit to do mm-hmm. to excel at something is insane. It, I think this doc is gonna win so many fucking awards oh, for sure. For facts, I mean, Tiger King is kind of close. Tiger King up there, dude, but Tiger King was just more like <laughs> shock value of what yeah. the fuck is this, this person, yet. yeah. He's weird. Yeah. This is more of like the 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 behind the scenes that we always wanted to know about during mm-hmm. this whole saga, right? Yeah, because I didn't know a lot of stuff about Jordan. It's so secretive and see him so emotional in some parts. Yeah. He was angry. He's still angry like he was yesterday. Yeah. He was talking about, all oh, these motherfuckers ain't shit. They ain't gonna do nothing to me. Yeah, man. That one part when he like almost teared up, he was like, this is just the way I play. If you don't want to play that way, this is my mindset. This is how I play. If you don't want to, then you don't have to cut yeah it's like damn man i wish they didn't cut that shit i really wanted to see where he would go after that i think i you know a part of me makes me feel that because of how jordan is as a human being and because he's so unique Mm. i think he also feels a little alone oh for sure oh for sure dude every time you won a championship or like just seeing him like when his father passed away and they won that championship during the father's day Father's Day, like him on the floor and all the cameras around him, or like when he won the championship and all his, he's playing the piano and like all these reporters and like another championship, he's just in the hallway, like sitting there, like smoking a cigar. Like there's no family. There's no really, I mean, he had his dad. Yeah. You know, for, and, you know, some friends, but for the most part, you're right. It didn't seem like he had friends. It's, I think it's hard for people <clears throat> to relate to him, right? Because they yeah. can't really connect to him like that. They can connect and relate to him in the sense of when they win the the championship, mm-hmm. there's victory and all this other stuff. But how, how do you connect to somebody at that level of greatness who, the word isn't better, but it's more like they have a higher sense of 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 success, right? Mm-hmm. They They have a very specific goal that they're always trying to meet. And everything else that's not towards that goal just falls to the wayside. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what his family life is like with his kid or anything else, yeah. but I'm pretty sure that it, it, from what it seems like when he's talking about this stuff is like, he seems very lonely. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. You know, that's just me observing from the outside. No, it's, I, got, I definitely got that sense. Yeah. It's just, it, like he is his own uh, uh, dragon. Like, yeah. you know, just because I've heard the stories about how competitive, how competitive he is with his kids, even when they're young, like tackling them and breaking glass and shit like on accident because he was super competitive playing football with his kids. God damn. There's a crazy stories like that. I forgot what, what radio station they, his kids went on. Damn, his son was not that good at ball. Je- oh, yeah. Jeffrey or Marcus. I Parker. forgot his name. Yeah. But I was disappointed. I was like, you got goggles? This is horse's son? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, he's... Nice. Yeah. I mean, but Jordan's so crazy. It's just... it Because Jordan wasn't supposed to happen. That's the crazy thing. Because yeah. like... The famous story he got cut from his high school team, sophomore year. That's the best thing that could have happened. He cries, tells his mom, Dolores. Dolores is like, You don't stop. You get, you could either get bitter or you could get better. Yeah. Get better. And then he wasn't like top 200, top 50, top 20. He wasn't like top Anything. player in North Carolina. Like he would have to be snuck into like these all star camps 
because his coach knew somebody and believed he was the next thing. But yeah, in terms of like SoCal hoops or whatever ranking systems like rivals.com, like ranking high schoolers, like Jordan was not on there. So he literally came out of nowhere. Yeah. Literally came out of nowhere and then became what he became. I feel like that fool was like anointed by God or something. He, ha- he, yeah. It's odd just it's, to see the trajectory that he went on. And from that one conversation from his mom, it's like, get better or get better. Yeah. He goes, got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the space jam. <laughs> yeah. And then from that, then, then he, I didn't even know that Nike was a no-name brand. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan was the one that single-handedly it brought up Nike. Yeah. That's fucking insane. Yeah. Converse was the biggest shoe brand out there for any NBA player with right. that corny ass fucking rap with Larry uh, Bird. Oh yeah. Dog, I want to know what I say. I got the shoes on my feet and then that's my day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm MVP. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Larry. Oh, Larry. Shut the fuck up, my boy. <laughs> that's not the actual commercial. But that was the weird thing watching that whole I was I, I had no idea. I knew that Converse Chuck Taylors were the first original basketball mm. shoe. I didn't know that they dominated the the shoe, mm-hmm. like the basketball shoe sport. You would never know that shit because it's always been Nike. It's always been Adidas. Yeah. And that was the end of the conversation, right? Yeah, yeah. Jordan came at the time. It was such a, uh, what's the word? Like kismet. Yeah. For uh, all of that. Because like the league was okay. Like they had Bird and Magic. And then like these... Jordan, like this hot thing from North Carolina, and no one's seen anything like that. And like Converse, like Jordan didn't want to go to Nike. He wanted yeah. to go to what Adidas or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And then Converse was only going to pay him like a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. And Nike was like, "Well, shit, we'll pay you two hundred fifty thousand. Just and wear yeah, shit. Just wear shit." And at that time, his agent was saying like they came out with this new technology called the Air Soles or something mm-hmm. like that. So the guy was like, "All right, Air Jordan." There it is. And the then fucking like Spike Lee and like, which I thought was so interesting with that <clears throat> because Spike Lee is strongly associated with the hip hop community and mm-hmm. just black, you know, the black community. And I wish in this documentary, they would have explored more about like Jordan's relationship with the African-American community because he's been notorious about not being vocal about it. Yeah. And I do understand because they talked about like that Harvey Gantt situation where like they want him to endorse that politician. And mm-hmm. he was like, well, I don't get into that. I'm just a basketball player. Like, and I agree with that. He like, if someone was like, hey, what's your opinion about this? I don't because know. Because I had a million followers or something like that. It's like, I don't know. I don't have the experience or the study. I, you know, I'm not qualified for this. So would uh, with Jordan, just going back to Jordan, just like them to take that risk on this rookie who has nothing on his resume and then expect three million and they get 250 or 200 million. It, th- it's odd. It's odd. It is so, he is an alien. Yeah. Like he's like those secret Illuminati triangles you see in like, yeah. bills and shit. Like he, I don't, he makes no sense to me. Yeah. It's, it, I, I kind of, I just didn't understand. I don't understand too when, okay, I get it. I, I get it in the sense of, I feel like even back, if, if for something that's more current for us, mm. any black dude that didn't support Obama, you were an Uncle Tom. That's yeah. it. They ain't yeah. gonna fuck. Mm. They ain't gonna fuck if you care about his policy or whatever. I'm not saying this. This is this is not mean. I don't know anything about Obama. I, I know nothing about politics. That's why mm. every time I talk about politics, Joe's here. Joe's talks about mm. politics all day. Mm. I know fucking nothing. Mm. I if, if somebody asked me how a, how a, I don't know what bill is put into this into play. See, I don't even know the terminology. Uh, I'll be like, I have no fucking shit. clue. Uh, I'm one of those laymen. I'm, I'm mm. one of those people that pays his taxes and lives the American dream. But if you ask me anything about government shit, it's hard for me to have opinion about something I don't know about, which is so funny because when you say, when you talk about Jordan saying, hey, I'm just a basketball player, mm. we, we, we fast forward now to today's current climate, right? Everyone. Now every celebrity is, is expected, expected to have an opinion about what's going on in politics when it's something they know nothing about, right? right? And they almost feel like they have to say something even though they're not that knowledgeable about the subject, subject right? Yeah. Because I forgot who said it to him. Who's that blonde blonde white lady that's a, that was a Fox reporter? Not Ann Coulter, but um, she was. people say she was hot. She's like blonde. She's very loud, very angry. You know who I'm talking about, yeah. though, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they did a movie about her. 
Bombshell. They, yeah, she was. I think. Yeah, but she says a lot of crazy shit, right? She's like super angry. She was super against Black uh, Lives Matter. Oh, not her. That's not her. That's different. Yeah. Bombshell's yeah. not about that. But yeah, okay. yeah I understand about But um, her, she was the one that was telling, you know, LeBron James to just be a ball player, mm -hmm. right? Shut up and dribble. Yeah, shut up and dribble, which is kind of what Jordan was saying. It's like, I just dribble. Right. I you know, right. the climate yeah, has totally. changed so much mm -hmm. where people want, our, uh, you know, celebrities to have an opinion about these certain subjects. Like, Every time some kind of like hot negative topic comes out about the Asian community, like, yo, do a fucking video on this. And I'm like, I can, but I need time to think and let me research this stuff right. first before I go ahead and form yeah, an opinion about shit. this. Because things change in every 20 minutes. It's exactly. Like, what the fuck? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Can't keep right? up with that. And I always tell people too, when you want me to do a, a video about this Asian, these Asian topics that, you know, is very disparaging on Asian people. You got to realize too, if I'm doing a vi every fucking video where I'm yelling and I'm screaming and I'm angry, it's exhausting on my spirit. Like mm -hmm. I, I get affected by that shit. I'm exhausted. I can't watch videos of fucking old Asian ladies getting beat all the time. Mm -hmm. Keep putting out these videos that you guys already know about this stuff. I'm not saying I'm going to give up, but what I'm saying is, is that to expect me to be, to, to pounce on any kind of topic <laughs> that has to do with any Asian, like disparaging Asian content. I would Ugh. be doing that every fucking day for every second of my life, and then I would die. Like cutting yourself. Yeah. <laughs> every day. It would just be me sitting here doing content about, oh, did you see this video about this other Asian person that was called uh, a gooky monster when he was eating a cookie? At first, mm. I would laugh. And the second, <laughs> the second I would be like, Yo. what the fuck? That's mm. kind of fucked up. Like I said, I'm not... You know, my best friend said this yesterday. He goes, "You're you're more of a comic than you are anything else." It's because when I when we were having the conversation about the one lady who was in the White House, I forgot what her political position is, but she said that there was a couple of people in the White House that said that she had the kung flu. And the first thing I did was laugh my ass off. I died laughing. I said, "The kung flu? That's fucking funny." I was like, <laughs> "That's a that's a good ass diss," and I was cracking the. Fuck up. And then when I was reading that, I read everybody else's comments. They're like, how dare they? I was like, oh, I missed the mark on this one. <laughs> like, oh, man. I was like, I'm not in the majority here. Am oh, I? man. Right? That's why I need to sit and simmer on things. Did you laugh about Wuhanic plague? Wuhanic plague? Yeah. Moving on. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the God of the Wuhanic plague. Checks out. You that's, will laugh. That's okay. <laughs> Checks. They're canceling my ass right now, dude. I gotta laugh at these things. There's right, funny shit right. because when people brought up the <laughs> argument, right? They go, "Oh, when uh, when the when Ebola came out, did they call it the African virus?" Yes, they <laughs> did. did. Yeah. Motherfuckers, there was drawing so yeah. many Ebola jokes. Yeah. You look at one episode of Wild and Out, and Michael Blackson on it. Everybody made Ebola jokes <laughs> yeah, about yeah. that motherfucker, dude. Yeah, yeah. So if when you make that comparison, yeah, trust me, when Ebola came out, they were making hella Ebola mm -hmm. viruses. That was like the go-to shit. You saw one dark skinned dude, they're like, boom, Ebola, don't share water with him. Yeah. <laughs> Move yeah. away. And that disease, by the way, when you get that shit, you're dead. Yeah. That's it. Ebola, ugh, bleeding through your eyes and shit. Ugh. It was fucking crazy. So, you know, when people have like, if somebody came up to you on the street, what's up, Buhonic plague? First, I would I would, I would stop my lip from laughing. I'm like, the fuck you saying that? that's that's good. What, what was that? It's, it's, come again? <laughs> What'd you say? I don't know, kung flu. I'm like, okay, okay. Dude, you just got him, dude. That's yeah. pretty fucking funny. Yeah. I don't know. I when I I have a weird sense of humor. I don't, I'm pretty sure there's some other people that laughed about that shit when they heard kung flu. That's Don't you even scared that like, you know, going back to like well, like batch, like mm -hmm. cancel batch, whatever, or cancel somebody. And like who sometimes I would like somebody's being canceled. Like the last thing was like cancel Chris Evans. Like, do you ever get Chris Evans? What did Chris Evans do? <laughs> I couldn't, dude. I was going through that damn timeline. I was like, what did he do? And everyone's saying, like, how about Captain he, America? Yeah, but there I couldn't find why he was being canceled. Like this whole these all these like K-pop stands, you know, and all them like oh. having the power to like create you know, the number one trending topic and all that stuff. It's like, why are people doing Oh, people this? in the K-pop community were mad at him. But for no reason. There's like, there's nothing out there. Like someone just started it and it just became wildfire. Well, here, here's the thing. Like, people who like Korean music too, they don't even like K-pop stands. They're, 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 there's this extreme right. faction of people. He's like these trolls, right? They're not even trolls. They're, they're, you guys are fucking losers. Okay, cool. That's what you guys are. You uh -oh. know why? They're it's coming because after you. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Suck my fucking nuts, dude. You're making my culture look bad, you dumb fucks. Like that's that's what it is, right? Because mm. it's they 
the, the comparison is fucking dumb. They go, you don't know what BTS did for me. They saved my life. Okay. That's what they did for you? That's fan-fucking-tastic. Here's the thing. Nobody has to fucking like the things you fucking like, you dumb fucking loser. The scary thing is there's so many of them. Yeah, they're like, they saved my life. Well, so did the fucking meal I ate yesterday, right? <laughs> if I didn't eat that fucking meal, I probably would have died. Shut the fuck up. The, the problem is, is that you're, you're attaching... This is not just K-pop stands. These are people who are fanatics of stuff like this, right? You think that people should feel a certain way about something that you enjoy the same way that you do. And if they don't, they don't like it. They think that what you do is dumb. You think that they, that you are an oppressed group. Mm. You think that you are putting yourselves like, well, why can't you just let me like the stuff that I like? You can, but people can also have opinion about the stuff that you like as well. That's life. That's why you're a loser. You don't understand that people, you can like it and also people can dislike you. Right. That's just a part of it. Yeah. Now it becomes a problem when you know people bully you about that, of course, right? But for you to go out your way and saying the reason why people can't shit on your stuff is because you don't know the positive impact that they've had on your lives and other people's lives. You could say that about anything. Mm -hmm. I could tell you about the positive impact that fucking this brioche bun I had today had on my life, right? <laughs> but if you went out your way and you said, fuck brioche buns, am I going to cry about it? It's like, you don't like brioche? I right, whatever. You're a fucking loser and I'll move on from it. <laughs> You know, right. we're not, I'm not talking just about K-pop stands. It's like you're mm. transferring this emotion about stuff that you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that about anything, mm. right? You're putting your identity into a fandom of an, of, of these people you don't fucking know to music. That's your identity. Your identity isn't you. You're investing all this time into something that doesn't help you grow as an individual. Mm. You're just, these stands too, they, they have these fan things where they just give them money every fucking month. They buy all their stuff and they support their fan group and all this other stuff. And they do that because they're hoping that they'll recognize them for it. They're like, I'm, it's, I get it. I trust me. I understand. We do get help from the things that we fan from, right? There's people that I appreciate that I donate to their Patreon because I appreciate what they do. But if somebody went out their way and they said, you know what? Fuck that guy. I'm like, that's cool. You ain't got to like it. Yeah. Right. It's just a scary thing when I see, you know, young people, they identify themselves in somebody else rather than identifying this person over here. Mm. And they don't develop as human beings. Yeah. Right. A lot of them. Because those those little boy bands, they'll disappear. Yeah. They they cycle every five to six years and they're gone. Maybe even less on average, even less. Right. Before BTS, it was um it was the um what's that group? The 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 Taeyang and all them. Yeah, so no. I don't know the name, but there was right. one before that. There was one before that. There was one before that. H.O.T. H.O.T. was the OG, right? <laughs> H.O.T. Teskis, all these other brands, right? See, I know what's up. I'm, I'm in the know. Okay. I know what's, what, I know what's popping, right? Yeah. But, you know, you're, you're not, you know, okay. I know kids, all right? I know what's hip. H.O.T. That's just like 1999. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> I know. I know what's going on. Uh, Phantom is weird, man. I was a huge fan. Okay. And listen, I say this from personal experience, right? I was so fucking dumb, right? Remember the Reebok pumps? Mm -hmm. I genuinely believed that if my parents bought me Reebok pumps, mm -hmm. I was going to fly. Really? I thought that I could dunk after I, after I bought those wait, Reebok pumps. How old are, wait, okay. You were, how, you were mad young, dude. That's fine. But still. <laughs> but I say I understand that, right? Believing uh, in something like that, that I believe that these Reebok pumps, if I put them on my shoes, mm. motherfuckers were going to get their ankles snapped left and right. <laughs> got it! Got it! Like, I was like, I was ready. Yeah. I, went, I remember I, I slipped on these Reebok pumps. I did. And I jumped and I didn't touch a rim. And I was pissed. <laughs> I was like, what? Ma, we gotta. Return these. I was like, these don't work. Yeah, I'm not touching the rim out here. I'm not black. <laughs> Give me some pink. I thought my hair was gonna oh. start curling up. You know what I mean? I thought I was gonna get some melatonin in my skin. So close. Yeah, I so thought all that shit. It didn't fucking happen, right? I yeah. remember just wearing Jordans. I was like, yo, when I get when I get my head like a pair of Jordans on, you best believe. Number one, ankles getting snapped. <laughs> I never had a pair of Jordans. I had some used ones. Oh, damn. Yeah. I, I had these uh, low top Jordan ones. And this is like, I never got like the original shit, right? Yeah. Because I, by the time I could afford like Jordans for real, for real, 
And I was saving up money for it. It was I was Jordans. older by then, like 17, 18. Yeah, my know? dad never let me. He never bought me Jordans. I no. wanted Jordans though. I had Nike Air Maxes though. Those Air Maxes. Didn't have those. Oh really? Yeah. The, the fuck closest, were you playing balling? <laughs> huh? What the fuck were you playing balling? And ones. Oh, and ones was dope. I had and ones. Yeah, and ones and no fear above the rim. Do you remember above the rim ATR? No, I don't remember that shit. <laughs> some fuck, some shit fucked my feet up. Of course. Yeah. I like how your dad wanted you to play pro ball, but he wouldn't buy you any kicks. Yeah, dude. The closest I got to the Jordans were like the Team One Jordans. And only because Eddie Jones was rocking them. I was like, I like those. And Eddie Jones wears them. And they're Jordans. So that's I'm, I'm going to get they're like 80 bucks. I got, um, yeah, I just, what was the first Jordan that I ever got? I remember I got those Air Max 90s, the one with the bubbles all the way through it and oh, shit. Oh, man. And I, I got them at a Nike factory oh. outlet. Sick. And this was around the time. And then the reason why I remember this is because, so we were broke for a majority of my life, right? And then uh, the, the business finally started turning around when I was like, like around junior high. And, they, and then this Nike outlet opened where things were like fucking 30% off, 40% off. And my mom was like, let's go get you some nice shoes. And I remember the Jordan, the, the Air Maxes that I got, um, uh, they had the the green bubble laced through it. It was like uh, neon green bubbles dude. laced. It was shit. Was I felt so fucking fly, dude. I wore that shit so. I wore that to ball. I wore that to sleep. I did everything with that shit. Damn. And then lo and behold, you wear a shoe so much, the, the bottom sole started fucking going through, oh, and then the no. bubble cracked. I was so fucking sad. Oh, no. So fucking sad. <laughs> but it was great. Those shoes like were a huge part of my identity. Like, yeah. number one, it made you the cool kid when you had dope kicks. Mm. You had amazing shoes. You were the fucking dopest person in school. Yeah. I remember in high school, I got these fucking white uh, Air Force Ones. Man, motherfuckers like, man, those clean as fuck. I'm like, yeah, they clean, motherfucker. Stop it. Yeah. Sup, bitch? You don't give me pussy, bitch. Yeah, yeah, right. I got Air Force Ones, <laughs> yeah. bitch. Yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's what I thought. I thought that shit was fucking tight. And then I remember I was one of the first motherfuckers that got these all black Air Force Ones and it was fucking Mr. Cool Guy again. What's uh, up, bitch? <laughs> 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 black ones. What's up, teacher? <laughs> Give me that <laughs> pussy. <laughs> 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 that was... Bow. Yeah, I started kicking doors down and shit. What's up, bitch? Bow. No, it's anything different on my feet. <laughs> yeah. Y'all ever know? Yeah, my... <laughs> <laughs> fucking boats. Yep. Uh, I used to love, and then I had these um these black leather Timberlands. Uh, <sighs> Let me tell you, them dude. What the fuck are talking about, Jordan's dog? I had I had these Timberlands, dude. Man. <laughs> nah, <laughs> East Coast version, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking camera. <laughs> I, 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 camera I, don't know. I was fucking listening to Biggie and shit. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but I had these Timberlands, dude. And then I remember my feet started growing because I was like a ten and a half. Uh, in, in when I was like 15 mm. and then when I was 16 I went to like 11 and then um, I couldn't fit the the, the 10 and a halves anymore They're like 10 and a halves or 10s mm. and they were super tight on my feet and I was like fuck man I can't wear these but they were so, still dope and they'll still fly <laughs> I wore that shit I just scrunched my toes in that bitch oh no fucking and, Chinese crimp or whatever that called yeah and I, and I started <laughs> binding my feet just, yeah, binding. To, just to put that shit like Perfect. a little Japanese geisha yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I just put my, and then my dad got so mad because he started seeing how raw my feet were because I, I had to walk back I had to walk to school and back uh, and my dad's like throw those shoes yeah, away I was looking at your feet yeah he was like throw those shoes he's away like, they don't <laughs> what's going on with your feet he, he's oh, like they're bleeding <laughs> and he was like you need to throw those shoes away I was like I'm not throwing them away these are dope like I bought this with the money that I saved up he goes they don't fit you throw your shoes away I was like why does it matter just let I me wear the them. shoes yeah. I bought them my dad fucking took those shoes and he threw it in the garbage. <laughs> no. And he grabbed it, went outside, and threw them in the garbage can outside. Oh, I thought he was going to throw them in a fucking phone wire. I was pissed, dude. Oh, man. I was so fucking mad. I remember I was living. I was why like, did why? he do that? I don't know. I don't know why he did that. I was still wearing the shoe. Even though it was a little tight, he goes, they don't fit you. Don't wear those shoes. My dad was such an asshole back in the day. <laughs> oh, and, no. And then my mom got so mad at him. She's like, why do you fucking care? Right. Like, let him wear the shoes. He goes, it doesn't fit him. She goes, who the fuck cares? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to buy him new shoes? He goes, I'll buy him new shoes. He never bought me new shoes. He just threw those fucking shoes away. He didn't buy me any new shoes. Oh, damn. That's a lot of hurt right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, damn, dog. Yeah, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man, the energy. Who? Yeah, man, you fucking <laughs> threw my goddamn shoes <laughs> away. But shoes were a huge part of your identity, man. If you had like the hottest Jordans at the time, I remember when the Aqua 8s came out. I have no idea. I remember the ones that had the hologram and the bubble. Oh, you talking about the, the 11s? 
Probably. Yeah. I remember when Darren Freeman got them shits, I was like, man. The 12s? I want to be Darren Freeman. Talking about so the one bad. where it looks like a quilted patch on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one. Yeah. The tens? I don't I fucking remember out. my Jordans anymore, man. I remember. Yeah, they think they're yeah. tens. You guys can correct me. You guys are sneakerheads now. I'm not a sneakerhead anymore. I don't fucking remember this shit. I don't follow sneakers. Yeah, the only the Jordans that I like are the only ones I fuck with. I don't know all them all the way through. I like the um the fives, the ones, uh fours, they were kind of eh, but threes. So one, three, the fives, Olympics. Which they were the sevens, Ooh. the Olympics, the sevens. They the were fucking, the dream team. The one you were. Oh I yeah, got, I got I, a pair. Yeah, I saw the. I when I saw the documentary, I was like, "Those are dope." I remember you having those. Yeah, those I had those. Are those, those are, that is my favorite, yeah. favorite fucking pair. Those are dope. The Olympics. They're so feel? fucking dope, huh? How do you feel? They like, feel hella comfortable. Really? If you could ball in shoes, the those that this that would be the one to ball in. Really? Out of all the, the Olympics. Yeah, they they're actually yeah. dope ball in shoes. Yeah. Um, and then um, what about the Robins? The Robins. <laughs> Rodman. Oh, the Rodmans. You remember like, Rodman's shoe? The, terrible, dude. <laughs> they Fuck. had that fucking sundial on it. Yeah, it was <laughs> fucking terrible, dude. <laughs> Whose shoe was it? Who came out? Not Stefan Marbury. Yeah, the strawberries? Dog. They were so bad, dude. Like 10 bucks a pop. They were 10 bu- like, Destroying kids' feet. And- you know what's the funniest <laughs> fucking thing? You guys can probably look this up. It's when the, the, we call them the strawberries. This motherfucker debuted it and the day he played in it he rolled his ankle <laughs> cause the shoe was so bad but yo bless his soul because he was saying that yo it only cost $10 to manufacture these fucking shoes so we should be able to give good balling shoes to kids who, who need it but too bad your shoes were trash and they were <laughs> fucking up people's ankles dog. Yeah, these kids I gotta retire. I gotta retire. <laughs> These kids were snapping their <laughs> fucking ankles. They were terrible shoes. Yeah, they're horrible. The, the best ball and shoe that you want to, that you can get that's affordable are the Adidas, the Pro Styles. Oh, the Pro Models, baby. The Pro Models, not Pro Ooh, Styles. Ooh, the Pro Models, man. I love them yeah. shoes. Pro Models are still like 90 bucks. Oh, for real? They're still affordable. Yeah, I, those are probably my favorite playing in college. Right? Yeah, those are dope. Great indoor shoes. You can yeah. still get them. You can still get pro. I said pro style gel. I was thinking about <laughs> I was thinking about the gel. Oh shit. Little black beauty supply store. I was like, I never heard of them shoes. No, pro models. The pro yeah, models are pro- still I saw I saw them at the Nike uh, the Adidas store in uh New York. They had a whole row. I was of thinking them. about buying those. Yeah. I was also thinking about buying T Max whack ass shoes. You were the you were the fucking boat. Dog, that shit was so bad. <laughs> those dude. are so bad. I remember when he sent LeBron James a pair, like the green and the yep. white. I was like, oh, I got to get me one of those. Did you get the M ones because of fucking Iverson? Oh, yeah, for sure. The answers. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be Iverson so bad. I was too slow for that motherfucker, dude. He was yeah. amazing to watch. Yeah, dude. I'm, oh, God, dude. There's so many people in the NBA that maybe you guys probably don't remember that was supposed to be really great, but due to injury, they couldn't make it. What's his mm-hmm. name? Fucking Magic from from uh, from Orlando. Anthony. Anthony Hardway, dude. Yeah. Fucking Penny Hardway, dude. Yeah. They called him the next Jordan. And then injury... Fu- if he got injured now like that, mm. he would have been healed in a second. But technology yeah. wasn't like that back yeah. in the day. Everybody, like Anthony Hardway, Grant Hill. Oh. <laughs> Harold Minor, for some reason. I don't know why I just remembered his name. <laughs> why Harold Minor? Oh. Because they said he was like Baby Jordan. I don't remember that. Yeah. I don't remember how he played. I just remember they called him Baby Jordan and he never, ever lived up to that. Oh, dude, I, I had the fucking... The pennies. The shoes. Oh, the big... Like yeah, circular. Yeah, I think my, my brother had it first, and I think didn't I got they his. have like that that reflector? If you shine like a light on it, I think like it was it on the air. Up. Yeah, but it's it's just this air on the side. It's that huge fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for Jordan shoes, the one, the three, the fives, and the elevens were my favorite. Jordan elevens. It's the the patent leather red and white ones. The breads. Mm. Lord, those were my favorite ones. And then fives are the ones that are built like a boot. And then mm-hmm. ones are the classic ones that everybody bites. That everybody bites the model of what the one looks like. Everybody does because it's, it's so crazy how that shoe was was banned from the NBA. It was banned. It was banned. Yeah, it was banned because he didn't follow code. Like because everyone was wearing the same shoe. Yeah, like they were wearing all that Converse shit. Mm-hmm. And then um, my friend Des he produced this documentary called Unbanned, the story of the A one, um, saying like. It just looked weird in unison with everyone else playing. Like he had these, and like it's such a crazy strategy design wise. Like it was a bright red mm-hmm. and black, and it just stood out. And people were like, "What the fuck? That looks dope." Yeah, like it, it feels like that crazy Converse commercial. Was like da 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 da, and yeah. then like the shoe was like, "Oh shit, hip hop and Run DMC is coming in town." And they, you know, Adidas had their own things. Like I want that, and so NBA was like, "Nah, we're gonna ban that shoe." Mm-hmm. And then Nike was like, well, how much is the fee? If every time, because if they said like, if Jordan wears it, continues to wear that shoe, we're going to fine him like $10,000, $5,000. We'll pay it. And then Nike was like, fine, we'll pay it. 
So for like a whole, I think for a whole season, they just kept they, paying it over and over yeah. and over. And then people were like, oh shit, this is the unbanned shoe. Like this is the banned shoe. Yeah. Like, I want it. So that's what drove sales crazy because people were trying to get it. Oh, is that why they have that Jordan 1 unbanned? They, they have a model. Dark, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. They sold that shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's what that meant. Yeah. I was so out of the shoe game. I didn't understand any of that stuff. Yeah, because it came as such a, like, like, again, like a kismet lightning bolt moment where like hip hop was at, you know, it was a uh, very conscious hip hop was coming into fruition and, and, and the, the league was becoming popular. And then, yeah, Jordan, it's fresh. Those shoes are so fucking iconic. I still have a lot of my Jordans. A majority of the stuff I sold. Like I don't I don't have a lot. The A ones are iconic. The A ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like <clears throat> those, they're so fucking iconic, man. Like I still have if I were to label the shoes that I still have left, I have my I have the the bread elevens. I have my Chicago ones. I have the the bread ones. I have uh the grape fives. I have the the fire red. The fire reds. Oh, the grapes the fives. Cool. I remember what those look like. Yeah, the, the grapes are cool. The, the fresh prints, mm. right? I got the actual the fresh prints fives. That was like mm. the newer one that came out. I thought that was so fucking dope. Mm. Have that shit. It's a little loud for me now. I might still rock it, <laughs> depending on how I feel. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then uh, I sold all my threes, which I regret, but you know at the time I needed the money uh. because I was you know transitioning, getting an office. So I was like, fuck it, just wear the stuff you're never gonna wear. Or st- sell the stuff you're never gonna wear. Mm. And I sold them, but now they're worth like fucking six hundred bucks. I'm like, well, fuck, God. I should have kept that shit. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, but I still have the Jordans that mean a lot to me. Mm. Yeah, I have the taxis. I have a few other stuff too. But yeah, man, like it's crazy how back in the day, if you wanted the Jordan shit, you just go in and buy it. Yeah, now you have fair. to wait for a fucking raffle. Yeah, it's dumb. It's completely yeah. dumb. Yeah, I missed that, dude. We just go in and buy. Yeah, shit. just go in. It was high. Like there's mm-hmm. like life in the stores, and mm-hmm. now it's just this whole manufactured. Wake up. Hey, mom, can you go wait in this line and get this raffle ticket? It's, it's like, dumb. What the like, fuck is happening? Like, this shoe is rare. Yeah. I'm like, rare how? You could just get the spec and make it in a fucking factory. Like, what, mm-hmm. what's, what's so rare about this shit? Mm-hmm. But I understand when something's like discontinued and, you know, it was during that year. I, I get the, how, how that fucking works. That's but nostalgia, yeah. Just the concept that I can't get a shoe when I want yeah. is, is so dumb to me. And I was one of those like sneakerheads. You remember, I had stacks of shoes everywhere. Mm-hmm. I was like, this shit right here could. Right here, they need my shoes. Like you wear that <laughs> shit, nah, man. Yeah, <laughs> it reminds me all the time, like with like Foot Locker and like, like we couldn't find these things online. Like we had to at least we had to see it on someone's feet mm-hmm. or look in the East Bay uh, catalog or something in the newspaper. Like that's just just like looking for I forgot it. About East Bay, man. Yeah, man. Just like oh my god, this is coming out fucking next catalog or whatever. Dude, you know, you guys used to pay. I remember I used to get the East Bay catalogs and I would just look. I, during lunch, I would just go through it. Yeah. I would bring those magazines to lunch. I would just look through it like, this is the new East Bay magazine. Let's see what I could cop. Yeah. And I would specifically remember me buying three Chuck Taylors, right? Because <laughs> it was three of those shoes for like 25 bucks. What the fuck? It was that cheap in high school. Oh, shit. So you can get three of them for like 20 bucks or 30 bucks. <laughs> and no one knew. Nobody so thought. So I bought 20 <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, oh, these are dope. They're like the original b- basketball shoes. And you know, so... At that time, Converse wasn't bought by Nike. So Nike actually bought out Converse and they mm. brought Nike Tech to Converse. So that, that's why you see like Converse with Nike soles oh. and, and, all, and all that other stuff and yeah. got a lot more comfortable. But, they, but that's, they remarketed them and they rebranded them and they st- got, started getting them popping. Also too, because of that punk rock scene, mm. you know, they were wearing those Converse shoes. Yeah. But I just remember, I just liked the way they looked and I got three Converse for like 25 bucks. And I remember two years after that, they were like 50 bucks a pop. Mm. I was like, how the fuck? Are these this expensive? These are cheap ass shoes. Cause it's literally just canvas and yeah. this uncomfortable ass sole. Yeah. It's it's fucking insane. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't know that Converse that Nike was bought out Converse. Yeah. And the Converse was the original basketball shoe that wouldn't allow Nike to shine. And they bought out the fucking company. Talk about a fucking power move, dude. Yeah. Isn't that insane? That's so dope. That's so dope. For some reason, I just remember that my first basketball shoe was Dr. J's. Anyway. You went Dr. J's? Yeah, I didn't mind. I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad? Yeah, my dad was like, this is a good player. Look at this clip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cool. Like, I'm going to make fun of, man. Sweet. Sweet. Goddamn shoes, <laughs> yeah. man. The fuck, Dr. J's? Yeah. Look at him scoop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dad. Yeah, get the fuck out of <laughs> yeah. here, man. Yeah. Fuck when, did, when did you uh, get picked up to play uh, pro ball? How old were you? Semi pro, that's... 22. So what, what categorizes something as semi-pro? What, what is that? Just not the league. Like that, like, well, it could be, it's considered amateur. Yeah. So it's a professional amateur. Professional is like, like the NBA. 
Yeah. You know, um, because even in certain parts in Europe, like Sean, uh, Sean, Tony Parker's team, like all of that, it's like, I'm pretty sure their league is like the amateur league. And it's just like a different scheduling in terms of games, mm -hmm. number of games, scheduling. That's really it in the yeah. pay. So for me, like it was like a season or like a, se like a season in terms of like three months, or two months, mm -hmm. and then a quick turnaround. And then a different, like that team would go into a different, so it's almost, almost like when you, when you go to like, uh, you know, high school tournaments, like before yeah. the preseason, pre that's what it felt like to me. So, uh, yeah, 22 is about when I went. Well, before that, I pay, played in the winter, Taiwan. And then three years after that, I can't remember when I broke up. Yeah, three years after that, that's when I, uh, I went to Whittier, didn't work out, and then Costa Rica. And then I was like, mm. what's the, what is, is it, what's the training like for that shit? Is that, Basketball? Yeah. Is that hard? Uh, how, how difficult? I, I'm, I'm only, because I I've seen like docs on like football training and stuff, but I don't mm. know what basketball conditioning is like. Aside from the few stuff where Mike Mike was like, I'm not gonna get punked by these pistons anymore. Oh I'm yeah, yeah. Work out some weight. Twenty and stuff pounds like of that. fucking muscle. I know. And this fool got jacked. And he was yeah. jacked. Yeah. And he was like, he came back that next year and fucking demolished him. Demolished him. So get the then. fuck off my court, yeah. dude. That's so dope. That's part of that doc is when Pippen got fouled fucking hard. He sat and down, no emotion. He yeah. Goes, yep. All right. And yeah. he just destroyed it. Yeah. Them. And Jordan was like, my new Pip didn't say anything. He's pissed. He's, pissed. <laughs> He's yeah. fucking pissed. Yeah. That shit was tight. That was super dope. Oh, I missed that. Just fucking pushing people to the floor. I don't think people realize how uh, uh, aggressive basketball was. Yeah, was, man. They don't, they don't, <laughs> they don't, the newer generation, they don't, they haven't seen that. Mm. So they don't understand why. For me, one of the biggest reasons why I stopped watching basketball so much was because the game changed a lot. Mm. It was, Everything, everybody's just trying to dunk 24 fucking seven. And I mean, on, now, now, mm. and then the or shoot threes, the, the flop and the fouling. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just, it just stops the game. Mm. It's just come on, like, let's go, let's yeah. go, let's go, let's go. The flop in the game is like, it's, yeah, the game has changed in terms of like officiating what's being let go. Mm -hmm. It's like now that the game has evolved into these new rules, now. These play, these new school players have to adopt to these and use it to their advantage and yeah. like use it as a, like a flap as a tactic. Mm -hmm. Like that's so that's so weird because like, we grew up in the nineties, or you know, was a hand checking. I guess yeah, no hand checking is not yeah, yeah. not allowed whatsoever. Yeah. Which I didn't yeah. know. Like you know, when you play street ball and shit, you yeah. start doing that shit. Yeah, like, you get mad. Yeah, you, you know, can't do that. Yeah. I'm like, can't do what? Right, like, you're, you're hand checking me. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to see where you're going. Right. <laughs> I think they took that. I think they took that away when Jordan was playing. Because even then, he was like, okay, cool. If you don't want me to hand check, I'll okay, play. But you know what's interesting uh, about that, too? There was There's there's an offense to to use hand checking to your advantage. You just have to wait for uh, them to put pressure to try to shift your weight, and then you go the opposite way. Totally, yeah. There's a way to stop hand checking. Yeah, you so would see it in the NBA all the time. Yeah, if that was allowed, then, then that's how we're going to learn how to incorporate this hand checking into the game. Now it's taken away. How are we going to adjust? Flopping. Flopping. Yep. Flapping or phantom fouls, or oh, the, the, smack in the face. Like you've never seen that in the <laughs> ESPN classic films. People were getting punched. Yeah. And that's when Josh Sally was like, if you're going to foul, fuck them, foul. foul them. Like take <laughs> them out. Take them out. Yeah. Like these sticky tackies, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, so man, hard watching. I didn't realize that. that the hand checking was the evolution of everything else. Mm. That's so fucking crazy. Because I just remember when they took that away, I was like, what's the big fucking deal right so that's when the flopping happened mm -hmm. that's so fucking odd man yeah i mean i'm a sacramento kings man but vladi diva man that's <laughs> floppers baby that motherfucker <laughs> flopped on everything he fucking farted on his ankle this would just be like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> he would fall over he was so good at that shit dude i remember shaq used to get mad at him flopping yep because he would flop so well uh, I don't remember that shit. He would. I remember too. It was just the those phantom fouls where you would just lean into the shot. Oh yeah. And then you would pick up the foul. Uh, it's just the most fucking pussy ass way to play ball, dude. I hated that shit. It's like foul. It's like, you know, flopping, flopping, and just leaning into a foul, just jump shotting into somebody. It's oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, fuck, come. Like on, studying film where I know that if you play defense, I know your hand. You're consistently doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna s line up my shot in there. Start to lock up and get yep. the foul. Like Kevin Durant, James Harden, we all do that shit. It's like, and like you said, it stops the game. It's it stops like, the game. It's just dude. dumb. Like, come on, just play. Yeah. So you're that bad of a fucking player? 
<laughs> like what these all stars? Yeah, you that bad of a fucking play. You trying to play one on one? Kevin with Hart, Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant. <laughs> you're trash, bro. I've never seen such a trash ass player. You fucking uh, hood hopping son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm a big fan though, Kevin Durant. I'm not, remember, I'm just making funnies. Yeah, these are yeah. It's 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 weird. It's it's but I I appreciate it. I don't know. I just miss the old NBA. Though. I do all oh, for sure. <laughs> I miss that shit, dude. I miss Dominic Wilkins slamming it on motherfuckers and be like, in your face, suck my dick, bitch, and then yeah, go to the out. other side of the court. I yeah. like, deal with that shit, you little punk ass bitch. Yeah. That shit was tight. Yeah, when you see Jordan was like, oh, don't hold him back. Don't hold him back when him and Reggie were fighting. Yeah. Yeah, don't let hold him, him back. Yeah, let him go. Let, let him go. go. They would never allow that shit, yeah. dude. That shit oh, was tight. Not. Yeah. Oh, dude, I miss. We sound like some old ass heads right now. Yeah, like, they don't do it. Like, I mean, it's just like the, it was a technology. Like, I remember, like, like the, the I would watch the pregame. Like, people don't really watch the pregame, but the pregame was so dope. Yeah, like there's such a aliveness to it, and like seeing it on the TV, and like kids are outside, and people, someone, someone has a hoop nearby, and you're shooting it. And you're like, what time is it? Oh shit, tip off. All right, cool, cool, cool. See, I have time. Then come back and shoot yep. some more hoops with your friends during halftime. Be like, who are you going for? I was, I'm going you for Utah. I was like, nah, Jordan, man, we're going six rings. Blah blah yep. blah. Like, it's like, no, no, no. Like, it's Utah's year. It's whatever. And like, it's, it's hard to really fall in love with a team now because of how contracts are built and how things are traded. Yeah, because people don't live and die with the team anymore. Mm -hmm. They live and die by the Business. paycheck. Yeah, paycheck. It's totally. all paycheck. It's like, yeah. well, this place is gonna pay me pay me more than allow me to be a star, so I'm gonna go. Right. Which which sucks, right? Because I, I do understand that you know everybody wants a ring. You know, that's that's really important. But there's great NBA players who never got a ring who are considered legends in this game. Mm -hmm. And they're not defined by that fucking ring. Right. But you know, I, like Kobe too, Kobe could have gone anywhere else, but he yeah. stayed in Lakers. Even when Lakers was trash, he stayed. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And he was the captain of that team and he fucking stayed. Yeah. I wish, I wish um Nash would have stayed with Phoenix all the way through. Ah, uh, that would have been epic. Yeah. But then yeah. he threw out his back, lifting up his duffel bag. Oh shit. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he no. lifted up his duffel bag in the in the gym and he threw out that his was back. It? Oh, and then he was no. like, Oh, I'm too old for this shit now. Damn. Nash was amazing on, on the Phoenix Suns, dude. You know what the crazy did you hear about that rumor? That old, old rumor about LeBron and Dwayne and D Rose. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. That was that was supposed to happen like 2010. Oh, really? Yeah. If, if Bosch didn't, if Bosch didn't re-sign, I think it was, or didn't, I think he was already there. No, 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 he wasn't there because they all came at the same time. It was something about like if Toronto, if they didn't, if Toronto, if Bosch didn't say that he was leaving from Toronto to go to Miami, LeBron and D Wade would have been like, because they were already talking about going to Chicago to join D Rose, because it, That's crazy. it just would have worked that way. So they would have statistically, like I saw like the team. It could have potentially been better than the Bulls that was showcased on the last dance. That would have been fucking crazy. Yeah, it was like Mike Baby, I think he was on the team. Mike Baby was on Chicago, and it would have been D Rose, and it would have been like <sighs> LeBron James, and then Kyle Corver. Like, D Wade just... is my favorite NBA player of all time. Yeah. Of all time for me. And it was from what I remember, like I love D Wade. Number one, he came into the league a lot older. Mm -hmm. And this was them talking about this is like during the Carmelo Anthony. Uh, it was Carmelo oh. Anthony, D Wade, and LeBron. They were like the three three kings, mm -hmm. right? It's like who's fucking better? And people would choose their players. My brother stuck with Carmelo Anthony, Mr. Fucking oh God, Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> big fan too, man. But you did not live up to your hype. <laughs> he did it's not. Michaelhead, man. Yeah, he just. I don't. It, he doesn't have the. He has the ability, but yeah. doesn't have the mentality of Kobe. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. like. You could see a lot of greatness in a lot of in a lot. Of, this is from someone coming from an outside, just a fan of the sport. Like Carme, nobody's gonna ever say Carme, Carmelo Anthony's trash. He's not. He's dope, mm -hmm. but I think his mind is weak, and if people yeah. can see it. Like mentally, he's not as strong as these other people. Mm -hmm. He's not out there willing to fucking die to grab that ball. Right. And I see it when he plays, and that's why I don't like him that much. Mm -hmm. Like I don't see that 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 willingness, that spirit. I don't see him getting angry. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe whining, but that's not yeah, like not angry. day in and day out. Mm -mm. Not like Kobe. Like in the, you know. You don't see it. I, I mean, I, I remember watching the game when Denver and Lakers were in the finals, or not finals, whatever Western Western semifinals, and they were like going at it, like, mm -hmm. oh shit, Carmelo's like really giving it to Kobe, like, yeah. But that's to, to the extent. when he was in the Olympics, he showed how dope he was. Oh yeah, just sinking threes like oh, a yeah. motherfucker. I'm like, right. that's the competitive Carmelo Anthony that I want to see. Yeah, 
and it just never happened. But Dwayne Wade, he reminded me of Jordan, how mm -hmm. he would bang up his body yeah, for any anything. fucking point possible, You're dude. Right back up. People were talking about his crazy shots, just over the back, you know, yeah. random shots. That's yeah. very Jordan-esque. Mm -hmm. And so he reminded me of a resurgence of Jordan the most, even more than, than Kobe did for me. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people think that's crazy, right. but more than Kobe, uh, just from how how he would handle the ball and how he would get these points in the most awkward situations reminded me of Jordan. Mm. I think if you combined uh, Kobe and Wade together, that would have been who Jordan was, yeah. right? Just how he would attack the hoop, but then you have like the mentality, that that Mamba mentality, and then he has Jordan's fade. Just mm -hmm. combine those two's fucking style together, that would have been Jordan right there. Yeah, because it, it takes, it takes uh, uh, Kobe's discipline. Like Kobe's very like calculated, like mm -hmm. very strategic about how he's going to shoot and attack the defender, whatever. But Dwayne Wade is just slashing all over the place, throwing it up, falling on the floor. He's notorious for like, not notorious, but famous for like get down four, get, mm -hmm. get up on the fifth or whatever the hell that. Clutch. Yeah. It's clutch. Every time. Yeah. If you guys, if you guys want to just look up any of like, just look up Dwayne Wade highlights and you'll see mm -hmm. how fucking insane he was. Yeah. I got to watch his 30 for 30. He has one. I'm going to watch that shit too. But Dwayne Wade, I respected him a lot because of, um, I forgot. I don't think it was 30 for 30, but it was a small doc. And he was just talking about how he grew up mm. in like his part of Chicago and how fucking terrible it was. He goes, dude, I used to walk down the street as a kid and you would see dead bodies in garbage cans. Like that was my existence growing up as a child to be able to do what I do now. Like this is, this is the reality that I had to escape. Mm. And now, you know, to see how he is now, he married Gabrielle Union. She's yeah. a lot older than him, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and they have yeah. uh, a <laughs> fucking little Boosie attacking uh, Dwayne Wade. Oh, about his uh, kid? About his kid. Is it uh, is that his child is transitioning into a daughter or yeah, son she's, is, she's yeah. So she's a mm. she's she's a it's a she, she, mm -hmm. she it's a she, but she's a she's a she now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that remember little boozy, he was coming at him. He's like, Dwayne, wait, that's a boy. You remember that shit? No. So Lil Boosie, he went on Instagram while he's in Planet Fitness. And by the way, Planet Fitness oh, okay. banned Lil Boosie from coming in, I think, after that video. <sighs> and he's sitting here just going on this moral rant about why uh Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade is wrong mm. about allowing his child to be listen I think a lot of people agreed with Lil Boosie actually in terms of like you know a child psychology and allowing them to choose their gender when they're not even a fully when their brain hasn't even fully developed yet allow them to do what they do and explore mm. but maybe not you know encourage what you think that they should do that is right because it's politically correct. Right. Just allow kids to explore and then they'll they'll figure out for themselves when they're older because it seems like they're kind of young. Mm -hmm. But of course, Lil Boosie didn't say that. Oh, man. Lil Boosie didn't say that out loud. He goes, Dwight Wade, that's a boy. Man, these motherfuckers, shh, shh, it ain't right. It ain't right. That's a boy. That's, that's what for he, real? This is what he was doing on Instagram I, I inside of Planet that. Fitness. Oh my. And I'm like, Lil Boosie, that's so good. You, you do realize your name is Lil Boosie, bro. Yeah. Who the fuck wants to hear life advice from you about <laughs> how to raise Boosie. a child, dog? Is Don't. he the one about his nephews? The ones he paid like some hooker? He paid some yes. prostitutes? Oh my Exactly. God. He went to jail for a hot minute. He only got out not too long ago. For that? I'm not, I'm not oh, sure if it was for, for that, something. but he got he basically got his underage nephew like a bunch of strippers to fucking slap pussies on his lap. What I call that's what I call a lap dance, slapping pussy on a lap. <laughs> he was slapping pussy on a lap. Yo, so you want to talk about the moral high ground about how to raise a kid, though? What you're saying, I whatever you know, trace amount of truth is in there. You are not the person to ever lay an opinion about how to raise a child properly. Your name mm. is Lil Boosie. Mm. Shut the fuck up. You know, and mm. that's what everybody was saying. It's like, dude, who the fuck? How are you going over here yelling in Planet Fitness of all the places? Like, he's screaming in Planet Fitness. You just call it Slapping Pussy? Yep. Slapping Pussy on lap, baby. <laughs> have you been to a strip club before? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have not. Uh, I have. That's yeah. the one thing I haven't done. I, I've never been interested. Yeah, me either. I picked up my friend, one, one of my teammates. I picked him up from the strip club once. He was like, you should come in one next time. I'm like, nah, man. He's like, look at my pants. I'm like, what about your pants? I said, the fuck? He showed me his pants. It looked it, no, he had black like slacks on, and it looked like a snail was like, like traveling down its leg. I'm like, dog, that girl just... put pussy juice on <laughs> his fucking leg. I was like, yo, man, that's disgusting. That's fucking disgusting, yeah. dude. You don't know where that lady's been, yeah. And you just had pussy juice all. He was like, smell it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> this right here. Yo. I told you, slapping pussy on laps, dude. <laughs> no, no. I told you, my, my descriptions are accurate. Uh, he was slapping pussy on laps. What the fuck? I know. It looked like a snail was... Just left this fucking juice yeah, trail on his leg and he trail, was just yeah. cool with it? Yeah. What the fuck? 
And he was like proud. Look, yeah. you, you see this? <laughs> <laughs> he said, yo, turn the light. I'm like, yeah, turn on the light, motherfucker. What happened to your pants? You see this? Yeah. You see this schmear? This ain't no snail. <laughs> this ain't no snail. <laughs> this ain't no snail. You see that shine? <laughs> that right there, yo, that glisten? Bro. Pussy juice. Yeah. <laughs> That's pussy juice. Ooh, I think you better let her loose. Yeah. I uh, never, I never... I mean, I wouldn't say I wasn't super interested, but mm -hmm. I never had an inclination to go to a strip club. I'm pretty sure, like, if, you know, one of the boys wants to go to a strip club, you know, for a bachelor party. No way, dude. Uh, I felt like something's going to happen, like belly or some shit. Like, oh, my somebody's God. Something's going to start shooting up the place. Oh, with my luck, dude. It's something that's going to happen. It's, it's like, like oh my God. you dancing with my main bitch. Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not. And then they see the snail trail on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> that's my bitch's <laughs> pussy juice. I, yeah, I know that line. It's like, <laughs> let me smell your pants, boy. Oh, Yo, no. Yo, you see that Tyler Perry fucking uh, <laughs> series that was like on HBO or some what, shit or BET? Which one? It's, it's, there's this clip, right? <laughs> so Tim showed me this shit. There's this clip of this dude saying, take off your pants. Yikes. And this dude takes off his pants and he gets down and he sniffs his dick. <laughs> and he goes, I'm like, Tyler Perry, what the fuck are you writing? Dog, I'm going to show you this shit and it's real. If you write- <laughs> That's the whole clip? That's the teaser? That's just the clip. Yeah. If you, if you type right. on Twitter, Tyler Perry <laughs> dick sniff, <laughs> and you'll see this dude come up and go, take off your pants. He goes, what you mean? <laughs> and the guy takes off his pants. Are they in prison? And his dick's out. No, it's like in a junkyard, a car junkyard. <laughs> And the guy goes down, he goes, comes up real close to his face. He goes down, he goes, sniffs the dick. And he goes, all right. <laughs> and that's the scene. He sniffs the dick. He sniffs the dick. I never <laughs> send this to you? I, I got to send this shit to no, you. No, bro. I'm like, surprised I haven't seen it yet. This shit's weird, dude. Oh, Tyler man. Tyler Perry lost his fucking mind, man. He he, he writes for the people. <laughs> he, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out who his demographic is. Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, Atlanta, man. Atlanta. Atlanta. Atlanta storage bin in Walmart. If Tyler that Perry, people, those people. If Tyler Perry came up to you and he goes, Khalif, I want to give you the lead role in my film, right? Yep. And I, <laughs> hold on. Okay. I want you to, all right. It's, it's it's a Christmas special, and it's called Medea Goes to Israel. <laughs> okay. Right. You go. I need you to play an Israeli military guy uh -huh. that checks people to see if they have bombs by sniffing dicks. Uh -huh. And then when you go to smell Medea's dick, you've, you're surprised that she has a dick and it's mine. Uh -huh. You take that role. The role is for $20,000 and we're going to shoot in the summer in Israel <laughs> for two months. Medea goes to Israel. Israel. Would I do it? Yeah. This man right here, desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I would not. I would not. I would fucking not. A lot of things I would do for twenty thousand dollars. Twenty. Oh shit! I was thinking about the art. Um, the art. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dog. But it goes to Israel. What the fuck? I'll find some art in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do some script analysis on that. I'll turn that shit up. Did you see the script some, analysis? Yeah, on that shit? I'll put some layers on it. Bitch. This fool just like, okay, yeah. well, oh, how some... am I gonna grab this dick? Like, yeah, I'm not gonna grab it, Khalif. I need to grab uh, need the dick. What's my motivation here? <sighs> <sighs> this penis. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Was it was it uh, Monique that had a problem with uh, Tyler Perry? I don't even know anymore. More, I don't even know anymore. Oh, I forgot what. It the definitely Trump Tyler Perry. It was definitely Lee oh, Daniels Butler. It was Lee Daniels. Was it? Uh, so Lee Daniels was the one that uh, that approached Monique with the whole. Um, it it because Lee Daniels did uh, Precious. Yeah. Right. That's it. Yep. Precious is. I was about to call the film Precious Purple, and that's not. That's not. Oh, uh, I wish called. you would have. Uh, <laughs> I wish you would. That is an Airy Spears so all joke. Those that is not my. Stands will get your ass. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. It is called Precious, right? And so Monique, Monique played a very integral role in the film. I never actually got to see Precious yet. You ever seen it? No, I haven't seen it. But I heard that show that clip where she runs and she she steals the chicken and runs. Yes. Okay. Keep going. That was amazing. <laughs> Without any context to what that film is, that is one of the <laughs> funniest things I've ever seen in my life. And you're like. <laughs> I was like, what? The sig Either this clip is really dumb it, yeah. or it's very deep. Yeah. It speaks on so many yeah. levels to the culture. Yeah, she could have been feeding her child. Like she needed to feed her. Yeah, but the fact that she's stealing fried chicken is hilarious. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's, what, that's pretty fucking terrible. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess Monique was offered a role on the film, right? Yeah. And, you know, she was kind of, to her account, what she was saying, she was... I was taken aback because of, oh, like Lee Daniels wants me to work on this art piece. This is amazing. What she got paid wasn't much money. 
right? Um, there wasn't a back end about her having to promote, promote to promote the film, but uh, she has like all these like email receipts or whatever, whatnot. But what it kind of boiled down to was after she kind of played the role, and this is before Oprah heard of the film or anything else, she he kind of put it into words that either it was through an interview or it was an email that Monique's role was to kind of get eyes on the film and she fulfilled that role. It's like, oh, I thought it was because you told me that I was going to bring something special to this fucking character, mm. right? So she, you know, that's pretty fucking offensive. I'd be fucking offended yeah. by that, right? Because the story behind Hollywood, if anything that has to do with Monique is the fact that she's a very difficult person. That Monique is difficult. She's hard to deal with. She's allowed or whatever. But Monique's argument to that is that you can say whatever you want about me, right? I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I'm highly opinionated. But one thing you can never say about me is that I'm a fucking liar mm -hmm. and I do not lie. And um, with the whole, the whole Lee Daniels thing, and I think Lee Daniels is canceled right now, right? Lee Daniels can't do shit. Really? I forgot what he did. He might have touched the baby or some shit. Really? Like I, don't know. I don't know what it is. He might have got me too or some bullshit. But, oh, shit. But what she was saying about in his case was, you know, she felt kind of used. Right, that 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 was the case, and then he was upset at her because she wouldn't do like promos and tours, which wasn't written in the contract, and saying that she was difficult. And you know, this is the story that this is the rhetoric that happens around Monique a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was that conversation with Monique and um, Steve Harvey. If you watch the Steve Harvey show, oh, I seen that. oh, that show that they go at it, dude, and not not at it as in screaming at each other, mm -hmm. but they're on two opposite ends. Mm -hmm. So Monique is talking about uh, a lot of prominent black people in entertainment lost their way and they kind of lost their integrity. They mm -hmm. say, they say, she says that it feels like a lot of black people in entertainment and I'm paraphrasing right now are still in that survival mode of like, I should be grateful that anybody wants to fuck with me anyway. It's, and every, anybody wants to give me a paycheck to do this role. Mm -hmm. She goes, well, for how long? How long am I supposed to do this? Right. How long am I supposed to feel grateful that I'm lucky to have this role rather than this is a role for me and I should get paid what I deserve. Yeah. I've been in this industry for a very long time. I know my weight. I know my I know my power. So what the fuck, mm -hmm. right? And then Steve is like, that's not how you play the game. He goes, I got children to feed. I got all this other stuff. And it kind of made Uncle, like Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve Tom, seemed like yeah. Uncle Tom, yeah. right? It's like, oh, you just here chasing ass and dollars, right? But I think what Steve was trying to... The fuck was that? Oh, is that the the battery going out on the uh, the fucking monitor or some shit? Who knows? But uh, either way, but uh, Monique was talking about how, you know, that's that's not a very there's no integrity in that, right? She goes, I'm I'm tired of doing this shit. I'm tired of having to just chase this almighty dollar and just kind of bow out and kind of do what everybody else asked me to do just because I should be grateful for these fucking roles. Mm -hmm. And then you know, then she went. I guess that camera's also out too. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> Them cameras are out. It's just going to be wide from here. Right, right. But um, what Monique was saying too with Oprah and the whole Oprah situation, she got super upset by Oprah. And she got really teary, especially when talking about, and she also wants an apology from Oprah Winfrey and Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> and this was like a couple of years ago, by the way. <laughs> because Whoopi said to her behind doors, is like, you know what? Like you're you're worried your 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 stance on this stuff is that you want to make a stance because you're worried about the generations before, that come after you, right? And you know, standing up for them. Well, here's the thing: she's like, just worry about yourself. Don't worry about them. Worry about yourself. And that broke her heart. She goes, because well, what about all these other prominent black women before me that came before that came before us and said, I'm just gonna worry about myself and not worry about the future. Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would you be? Mm -hmm. Right. And you're mm -hmm. somebody that should stand up for more than just this. And you're okay just looking after your back and saying, fuck you to the rest of the, to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And she goes, my heart was broken. She also mentioned like when she had a conversation with Oprah and she confronted Oprah and said like, yo, you owe me an apology. Long story short about that was that uh, this is, this is Monique telling the story. Um, Oprah was going to do this whole special about her fucked up family situation, right? She was going to have her mom on or whatever. And she goes, no, I don't want you to do that. Right. But instead of having her mom on, and her and her mom on, she just brought her whole family on there without telling her about it. And so she thought they, they had a mutual respect saying like, oh, I don't want anything. Don't, don't put up my family business out there. But then Oprah went ahead and did it anyways without Monique being there, but she brought her family on. Mm. And that caused a lot of drama in her life. And she felt fucking disrespected. Mm. And so she confronted Oprah about that. And then basically what she told her is like, you owe me an apology. And then what Oprah said was that if you feel like I did something wrong to you, I completely apologize, which is not a fucking apology, oh, right. of course. And she didn't feel right about that stuff. Mm. And, you know, what she, what Monique told Oprah was, hey, like, 
I remember when I was a young, fat black girl and I looked up to you and I said, and I saw you on TV and I said, there's another fat black woman. People respect and love her. I want to be just like you. And on a field trip, she went to go see her. And then, um, you know, she was inspired. And she told her, told that to her as a young little girl, I think whatever, let's say she was eight years old. And then later on, when she started popping off and became famous, she talked to her. And then uh, Oprah said something to her that stuck with her, that helped her. And she goes, the reason why I like you so much is because I see a younger version of myself in you. And it empowered her. And so when she confronted her that, about that stuff, she goes, well, what does that say about you when you did all this stuff? She's like, remember that time when you told me that you saw a younger self of you, you in me? So I want to make sure that I keep you in check and let you know that this is wrong. She goes, sweetie, I say that to everybody. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Yeah. Could you imagine? It's like Ugh. saying, I say that single phrase to everybody. Yeah. And, and she was wrecked. You know, yeah. and so she feels like she deserves an apology from Tyler Perry and all this other stuff. And I, I, I agree too. You know, on the political scale, is it a good move? But yeah. you know, what is what does Monique have to prove now? Yeah. Right. Besides, you know, setting up an example and showing people what's up. She goes, yeah. I don't respect these motherfuckers for what they did. Like, I, I love them. They're my brothers. Like, we're we're cool. However, this is how I feel about this situation. So this is a wrong that I feel that you guys did, and I feel like you, I deserve an apology for the way that you treated me. Hollywood's fucking crazy, man. So you, you and Monique could be friends. I think I'm scared of her. <laughs> she, could, she could talk me into believing shit that I don't believe, right? But the reason why I like her is because I think she's very good at proving her point. Sometimes I feel like she says she she understands she understands and hears you, but she doesn't. She mm -hmm. still just wants to get her point across. Mm -hmm. But um, I do agree with her. But would I have been bold enough to do what she did? No. Right, because I'm not in her position, but I think she's in a position where she can't speak up against yeah. it. People were upset at her about her Netflix deal because uh, number one, she felt slighted about it. But I think her point was like, why can't I feel slighted about this money that I feel that I deserve? Right, mm -hmm. the whole I think Charlemagne the God had a whole issue with it because he says that his to his argument is that to his point, you don't deserve Dave Chappelle money because you can't bring in Dave Chappelle numbers. Mm -hmm. Right. Facts. I think that's fucking Big facts. facts. Yeah. Right. It's hard. That's yeah. anybody. That's just that's not just Monique, right? Mm. But she goes, if if I walk into this Netflix meeting, right, and they say to me, Hey, you're a legend. You're the female Dave Chappelle. You're on mm. that type of status, right? And then I come back away and then you go, Well, we're gonna give you five hundred thousand dollars when you offer <laughs> Dave Chappelle 50, 60 million. That's what she said. They said they told her. She told the offer. The offer was five hundred thousand dollars, right? Mm. And she goes, well, that doesn't make sense for me. Number one, it's offensive. Number mm. two, I have to do this stand-up and I have to go on tour. I can't use this material. It's it's up on this TV screen. So this has to make, I'll make about two, three mil yeah. doing my regular stuff, but I'm not going to be able to form this. So mm. it should at least match that. And they're like, well, we can't do that. It's like, that's highly offensive. It's super offensive. Yeah. I actually agreed with her. I was like, that I, when, I, when she said 500,000, I was like, 500,000? That's it. That's it? it? Like right. it's fucking Monique. And she mm. does have a huge fan base, mm -hmm. right? She's definitely worth, worth more than 500,000, at least a fucking mil for fi fucking right. crying out loud. Right. If you could give Dave Chappelle 60 million, you could, get, right. you could give Monique a million dollars, two million, to cover up the expenses that she would lose from doing that. Right. And uh, it's it's in her right to feel offended by that. You know, the whole boycott thing, I'm not too sure if I'm on that side. Mm. And then her suing Netflix, I think that's a little weird. Yeah. Right? But she got the whole, she is not a monolith. For sure, she's for like, sure. She's a all kinds of black person. Yeah, she scares me though. I tell you <laughs> she fucking scares me. No, nope, though. No. Yeah, yeah, guys. Well, uh, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain <laughs> Podcast. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Get, went through a lot of things. We talked about the last the dance. dance. Talk about shoes. Talk Monique. Talk Monique. What else we talk about? A whole bunch of stuff, man. Oh wow, shit. Yeah. Um. Well, you guys can catch this podcast on every audio platform out there. One day I'll be like Joe Rogan where Spotify offers me the $100 million. Ooh, that'd be but nice. But the funny thing is I'm already putting my stuff up on Spotify, so they wouldn't. But <laughs> take your shit. You can take, my, take your stuff to, uh, I don't know, iHeartRadio. <laughs> That's right. I, heart, I don't give a fuck. Somebody <laughs> sign me, man. Apple. Yeah, well, thank you for listening into the Genius Brain Podcast. We signing out this motherfucker. You can catch us on every single audio platform. You can find Khalif at Khalif Boyd. On Instagram. Yeah, follow me. Follow send, him. Send me a DM. I'm lonely. Oh, God. No, not that kind of lonely. I just want conversation Now send people. him dicks right now. Do not. Send him that video clip of that dude kissing that dick and saying, that could be you. That could be us. Don't do that. <laughs> Please do that. <laughs> well, you guys, we'll catch you all next time. And peace out. Peace. Peace.